Hi everyone, welcome to Python Osmosis, episode 14, the Python screencast that does not require an extra cup of coffee. I'm Ryan Shea, and in this episode we'll be talking about Intermezzo, coding style. So as opposed to some other programming languages like Perl, where there's more than one way to do it and it's encouraged, in Python, preferably there should be only one obvious way to do things. And those ways of doing things are captured in what's called the PEP8. And the PEP8 is, is a document that you can see over on, on python.org, and you can read all of the ways that you should write your code. The layout, how to indent, all of these things. I'm just going to be going over a couple of these today, some of the most important. So let's go into VI and take a look at an example that I put together. So here I've created a definition, and you notice the indentation is one, two, three, four spaces in. Spaces are actually preferred to tabs, and four spaces is a good balance between being not indented enough and difficult to read and being too indented and requiring a whole lot of line wrapping. So that's that just basically use four spaces. Uh, if you get a line that exceeds 79 characters, you should actually escape it. So here's an example of a long list, and this, this list has strings that go on and on and on and on. And when you get to 79, you can use a backtick, or I'm sorry, a, a backslash to escape the new line character, and then just continue on the next line. Um, just keep it nice and easy to read and compatible with not so wide terminals. Notice that between the definitions that we have here, we have a blank line. Don't overuse blank lines. Um, just use them between definitions, between classes and definitions, uh, and between sections of your code. But don't don't put put blank spaces between the actual lines of your code unless it it really is necessary. If you are to, going to create a comment, uh, put a comment on its own line. Don't, don't put a comment at the end of a line over here. This is a comment because that's just sloppy and it's against the pep8. So what else? Always use doc strings. In these definitions, I've created a doc string that gives you an idea as to what this function does. Um, okay. Spaces. Here I've created A, which is the result of running the example function and another example function. Notice around the equals, I've put one space. I didn't just do this. Although syntactically this would work just fine, it would compile. Just always put spaces around your, your equals operators. And in my parentheses, I didn't put spaces after the parentheses. Again, although this would work, that doesn't follow the PEP8 guidelines. But around my plus, I did put spaces. And within my arguments sent on to another example here, after a comma, I put a space. Even up here in my, def in my definition of a list, I have spaces after the commas. So that is, is the right format. Let's talk a little bit about naming. Your variables should just be lowercase. Um, if they need to be multi-word, use, use underscores. The same thing for your definitions. When you create a definition, use lowercase with underscores. Classes, however, are typically written in camel case. And that means each word starts with an uppercase, followed by lowercase letters, my class in this, in this example. And the only other important thing to mention is, if in doubt, use ASCII. Even if you plan to use your code in another country, um, just use ASCII. It, it always works best. That's all for now. This screencast is directly inspired by the official Python tutorial by Guido Van Rossum at python.org.